Lust and anger towards us to what? Cease. Here's the question. Will thou be angry with us forever? <laughs> Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? Will thou not revive us? Will thou not revive us again? Amen. That thy people may rejoice in thee. Show us thy mercy. O Lord, and grant us thy salvation. I will hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. But let them not return again to what they find. How to start and continue revival fires. Father, before the foundation of the earth, you knew that Pastor Jeter would plan this three nights of meeting. Yes. You knew the people that would be here tonight yes. and that this message would be for us. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would cause this message to sink deep, deep in our souls, deep in our hearts, deep in our spirit. Yes. Help us to leave here tonight. Yes. For the fires of revival, Lord. In your name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 If you had to start a fire that would blaze across a prairie. You would need light the fluid and oxygen. No fire burns without oxygen. Nothing burns unless it has fuel. Am I right or wrong? Right. If you went out into the farmer's camping, you can get all of the wood you want and you can put the wood right there. If you don't put fuel on it, scratch a match and there'll be wind blowing, that will go out, wouldn't it? Are you, are you with me tonight? Yes. Please don't miss what God is going to say. In our text tonight, we see that even in the Old Testament, people were crying to God for revival. All right. In the Old Testament. In fact, listen to what he says. Will thou not revive us again? He's crying, God, we need revival. Mm -hmm. But not only was he saying that we need revival, he said, God, there was a time in the past when we knew what revival was like. Mm -hmm. We need revival again. again. That's what he said in this, in this particular verse. Will thou not revive us okay. again? is a question that is asked to the only person that can bring revival. And who's that person? Jesus. God. He said, God, will you not revive us again? So, if ever revival will come, only God can send revival. Alright. Only God. My question is this. Have you ever experienced a real revival? I want you to think about it. Have you ever experienced a real revival? God gave me the opportunity for about 25 years, one week out of a month, 
to be able to travel through all the United States, South America, and the Caribbean during revival meeting. In 25 years. I was in one island doing a week of revival meetings, and when the first service was held, revival broke out in that church. <laughs> I am calling my wife and I said, honey, if I have ever experienced revival, I have seen it this morning. Amen. It wasn't because of me. It was because of God. And here's what happened. Yeah. I, I had preached the message God had given to me, gave the invitation. When all of a sudden, a lady in the middle of the church, we're singing the invitation song. She gets up from the middle of the church, and she comes up and she is talking. So I just stopped the singing and said, man, what are you saying? She said, that lady up there and I have not spoken to each other for a long time. All right. I said, hey, come on. Then both of you need to go in a back room and get things right with God. Amen. The altar, Master, the altar became flooded with people coming and meeting with God. After the service was over, we had dismissed the service. People were still at the altar for nearly 30 minutes. Just meeting with God and weeping. Mm -hmm. That was the first time. The first day. The next day, all of a sudden, we were closing out the service. When the pastor asked a man to close and pray, the man said, Pastor, before I close in prayer, I have something to say to this church. He said, I used to be a member of this church. And I got upset and left the church. And I came here and I heard the message. And God says, you better get right with me. Amen. I cannot pray unless I confess Amen. my wrong to this church. Amen. The next night, two churches with their members came and joined the service. When the invitation was given, one pastor stood up and he said, I've got something to say. So we stopped the singing and he said, listen, you see that pastor and his members over there? We don't get it all with each other. Oh, no. Is that so? Did y'all need to go to the room oh, and And y'all need to get right to God. Mm -hmm. But by this time, the crowd has grown and the church is too small to hold the amount of people that were coming. Mm. So the last night of the service, we went to a bigger church. I preached the message. We are given the invitation when all of a sudden a man walks down the aisle, comes up to the pulpit, and he says something in my ears. I said, wait a minute. I said, is that really right what you just said? He said, yes. And he said, something happened between me and the pastor's wife, and it was nothing immoral. <laughs> But he said, something happened, and we have not been talking to one another, and we've come into the same church. I said, is that so? And because he said it publicly, I had to deal with it publicly. Mm -hmm. So I called the pastor's wife, because he said, Lots of people in this church know about it. Mm -hmm. And he said, I want to stay to, I want us to get right with God. I want to experience revival. So she came up. Right here before a crowd of near 400 people. I told her what he told 
me. And I said, is it true? She said, yes. And I said, is it true he hasn't been speaking to you either? She said, yes. I said, is that true? And right there publicly, both of them confessed their sins towards God and their sins against one another. And the fires of revival broke out. Yeah. Amen. So I call my wife and say, honey, if I have ever witnessed revival, I've seen it this week at this church. Amen. Wasn't it a thing that I did? It was what God did. Amen. So I ask you, have you ever genuinely experienced revival? Yeah. Let me say to you tonight, revival is for the same people. God. Amen. Not for sinners. Amen. Let me say to you tonight, revival is not for the lost. That's right. Revival must happen in the heart of the Christian yes. and in the Christian church. Yes, yes. Right. amen. It cannot happen outside of the church. It has to happen inside of the church. But the thing about it is, once revival happens in the church, the results of revival will be felt inside of the church and outside of the church. Come on, mm -hmm. all right. yeah. But it has to start in the church. Amen. It has to start in the heart of somebody in the church. And I wonder, I wonder who is the one person in this service tonight that God may want to be the match that he could scratch All right. to start the fire. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Every single one of us ought to say, God, if you need me to be the match, yes. strike me. God, if you need me to be the match, oh, please strike me. So how do you get revival started in a church, the fire started, and the fire is burning? There's one verse in the Old Testament in 2 Chronicles chapter number 14. That tells us the conditions yes. that cause revival to come. All right. That should be evident for revival. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Amen. God saying, if, if my, what? If my people. My people. Didn't say the Lord. They are called by my name. My people. Mm -hmm. That's you? Yeah. Is that you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If my people. Who are called by my name. Which are called by my name. Mm -hmm. Come on. He said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. Mm -hmm. To humble themselves. He said, minister some to me in that name. Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils. Mm -hmm. In thy name did many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them. I never knew you. Never. So if he said, if my people, it meant at some point, he knew you. That's and right. continues to know you. Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble. They'll humble themselves. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Pray. Pray for them. They're not hid from heaven, mm -hmm. from their they not hid in their land. Yes. I want us to look at the conditions that cry for revival. Mm -hmm. What are the conditions that cry for revival? One. If my people which are called by my name shall what? Humble. Humble, Humble themselves. Mm -hmm. 
Revival comes when you humble yourself. When God's people are what? Humble. humble. So if God's people are not humble, mm -hmm. it would be stopping revival, isn't that right? Right. right? What is the opposite of being humble? Arrogant. What? Arrogant. Ah. God said that one of the things, one of the conditions that would cause a church to cry out to God is that there's pride in the church. Is there any pride in this church? Are you a proud person? Are you proud because of your position in this church? Are you proud because of how long you've been coming to this church? No. Are you proud because of, I don't know, if you got money? Mm -hmm. Are you proud because of your education? Oh, oh, wow. Are you proud That's because of the your standing? Design. What is it this, tonight? Mm -hmm. That when God looks into your heart, mm -hmm. he sees pride. Mm -hmm. Are you proud because of your color? Mm -hmm. Are you proud because of where you were born? Well, no. What are you proud of? Listen. Everything. Listen. When I, in our family, we were poor. We just didn't know it. <laughs> the thing about it is this. I had a brother older than me. When he got a little bigger, his clothes were too small. All right. Come on. Who got the clothes? You did. <laughs> Yeah. 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 My brothers hand me down clothes yes. were too close to me. Yes. But they were hand me down. All right. And I want to say to you tonight, everything that we have tonight mm -hmm. come on, is a time. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Sorry, we are, listen, we don't have anything at all to be proud about. Yes. yes. Come on, preacher. You, you don't need to be proud about where you were born. God mm -hmm. allowed you to be born. Come on. You right. don't need to be proud about who was your parents. God gave you to those yes. parents. Oh, you preacher. don't need to be proud about what color you are. God gave you that color. Oh, you don't preacher. need to be proud about your skin or your hair. Whatever you have, God gave it to you. That's right. right. So if God looks in the church and he sees pride, Mm -hmm. Says that church needs to buy. Humble themselves. Yes. And what's the next thing? Call pray. And pray. pray. Yeah. Now listen, if God says you need to pray, you know what God is saying? If God says the church needs to humble itself and pray. One of the conditions in the church that cries out to God for revival is prayerlessness yes. in the church. Yes. All right. Yes. Say it. Say it. Prayerlessness. Yes. Listen, you think the devil gets scared of you because you sin? <laughs> <laughs> no. You think the devil gets scared of you because scared of you because you got a good pastor? No. You think the devil gets scared of you because you got his building? No. You think the devil gets scared of you because you get money? <laughs> Let me tell you something. That doesn't face the devil at all. I'm telling you something. That's right. Scares the devil. Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. When he sees. Amen. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. The devil trembles. Yes. When he sees the same. Of God on his, on his knees. Yes. And I was saying to you tonight, one of the reasons why we are not seeing revival in the church is because the church has lost its praying status. All right. Let me show you. Speak again. Let me show you. Speak again. Listen. The biggest crowds come out to church on a Sunday morning. Am I right or wrong? How about a Wednesday night? That? No. No. Oh, well. Come on, Wednesday night. Come on, preach it now. Preach it. Preach it. 
Christians and Midianite Christians. You that are saved here tonight. You are to be determined by the leading of God and the leading of your pastor to make the biggest attendance of your church for every day. Yes. 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 You imagine what would happen? You imagine what would happen in this church? Yes. If the greatest attendance showed up for Brady? Yes. Mm. Yes. I remember my church that went to a church in the United States and called me. He said, listen, I'm going to a church on a prayer meeting tonight and I need a ticket to get inside. Oh, wow. Said, what do you mean you need a ticket to get inside? <laughs> oh. what he said. There are so many people mm. that are coming to the prayer meeting. Wow. Thank that if you don't have a ticket, you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> Thank you. you just have to have a ticket. And if I don't have a ticket, I can't get into the service mm. because there's so many people. Mm. I don't, I don't pray with them. Yeah. And God says that when you see prayerlessness in a church, yes. Right. Yes. it is one of the conditions that that church is in need of revival. Right. Yes. Question. <laughs> is that true of this church? Wait a minute. Listen to me. The church is made up of the people. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. So is it true of you? Yes. So we know. He said one of the conditions. Make sure pride is gone. All right. Second thing. Make sure that prayerlessness yes. is gone. Right. Listen to what he says. That humble themselves and pray. And seek his faith. And, and do what? Seek his faith. I'm going to tell you something here. When you listen to the pastor, listen carefully. Right, mm -hmm. One of the reasons why we are not seeing revival mm -hmm. is because people are, are seeking the favors of God and not the face of God. Amen. Right. Amen. Give me this. Give me that. Give me this. Give me that. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> he says there is not the presence of God. There is a cry for the presence of God. Revelation chapter number 2. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, listen to this. Behold, I stand at the, the door, door and knock. And you know what? That's the door of the church. It's not the door of the heart. That's right. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man. I get this. That's Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says that he is walking among the candlesticks. Yeah, inside the church. Yeah, but in chapter 3, he said, I'm standing on the outside of the door. Come on, preacher. And I am knocking. Question is this. Come in. How do you get out of here? <laughs> huh? If he started on the inside and he's not on the outside, mm -hmm. how did he get out of there? You know why he got out of there? Because he knocked him out. Because he did not like what was mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. in the church. All right. And he walked out. Come mm -hmm. on, come on. But you know what's the saddest thing? Mm -hmm. Here's the saddest thing. Keep it, keep out. He's walked out of the church and things in the church, they're just going on mm -hmm. at the moment. People don't even notice he was gone. <laughs> People didn't notice he was gone. Go ahead, bring it. They didn't realize he's left. <laughs> And he's on the outside and he's knocking. Mm -hmm. Please let me in. Amen. What is this? What is going on in your church? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. That will cause the Lord's presence to be. Alright. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you something. In a lot of churches, God is not there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's about the preacher. Yes. 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 It's about the quiet. No. Uh -oh. It's on. about the offering. Come on. Mm -hmm. It's about the praise team. <laughs> it's about the lights. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. In a lot of churches, it's more about entertainment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In a lot of churches, yeah. it's more about a show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than allowing God to be the show. Yes. Yeah. 
What are the conditions? Pride. Pride. Right. Check yourself, you know. Yes. Second thing, prayerlessness. Mm -hmm. Third thing, the presence of God. The chorus says, surely the presence of the Lord is in yes. this place. Lord. Yes, yes, yes. I was, I was in a revival event. Over 1,200 people were in a tent. This is telling you. Look, I sat as the preacher preached. I am telling you, honest to goodness, the presence of God was so evident that I felt if I leave this way, I'm going to put into God. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. I felt like if I leave this way, and I'm bumping into God. If I go this way, I'm bumping. It was like God had me in a straight jacket. All right. The power of God. Yes. The presence of God was so real. Yes. Tell me this. Right. Tell me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Revival is needed in a church. Yes. Not only because of pride. Not only because of prayerlessness. But because the presence of God is like the church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Say what I said. Yeah. Again, my people to call by my name shall humble themselves. Yeah. Yes. And pray. The correction for pride, human. Mm -hmm. Amen. Humble themselves and what? Pray. 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 And seek my faith. Mm -hmm. Answer to prayerlessness. It's prayer. I'm not, listen, not preaching about prayer, not talking about prayer. <laughs> pray. Not discussing about <laughs> pray. 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 Amen. Talking to God. Then the third thing is to seek His faith. Yes. Yes. Then He will. The psalmist said, he in will. Psalm 27, I believe, verse 8. Listen to what the psalmist said in Psalm 27, verse 8. He said, When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord. All right. He said, With my heart, when I hear God say, Seek my face at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, come on. I don't lie in bed and say, I need to sleep. God, I up sleeping. <laughs> Get up. He's calling. Yes. That's how we are real quick. Yeah, I'm ready, but can I have a stone and not that clock? In <laughs> Listen. Not only right that. And turn. Listen, when, when there is <laughs> the need to part ways with sin, mm -hmm. right, there's a need for revival in the church. Right. Yes. Listen, if God could take a camera Put that camera <laughs> on your heart. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. <laughs> and your sins show up there. <laughs> You're going to run out of church, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. You can go to churches tonight and it's hard to take a camera and and show the sins mm -hmm. of church members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, go and run and run. <laughs> <laughs> run out of the church and never show back up in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While man looketh on the outer side. Come on. God, God. God. Let me give you one other condition. In a church that says that the church needs revival. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 
4. God is speaking to the church of Ephesus. Alright. He said, listen, Ephesus, mm -hmm. there are so many things about you mm -hmm. that I can commend you for. I can commend you for so many things. Come on, then he comes around and said, but nevertheless, I have what? One thing. One thing. Hey, you left your first love. Listen, all it takes is one thing. Mm -hmm. All it takes is one thing to get right. All it takes is one thing to keep the fires of revival mm -hmm. from starting in your church. Yes. And what is the one thing he said here? He left the first love. You have left mm -hmm. your first love. Your first love? Yeah. It was God. We all need to be honest, man. Be honest. Yes. You remember when you first got saved, Come how on. much you prayed? Mm -hmm. Remember when you first got saved, how much you would read this Bible? Come on, preacher. Mm -hmm. Remember when you first got saved, you want to tell everybody what had happened to you? Mm -hmm. You remember when you first got saved, you couldn't wait for the time to go to church? Mm -hmm. You remember that? And if you are not experiencing that first love that you had when you first became a Christian, come on, this church needs revival. <laughs> Those are the conditions that cry for revival. But what are the corrections to restart revival? But so, what is the, the, the correction? You see, God alone sends revival. But there's certain conditions that have to be right and corrections that have to be made. Let me show them. If a farmer wants to have a harvest, a, a, a successful harvest, but his ground is dry, what does he need to do? Here's what he needs to do. He needs to go before God and he said, God, I need rain. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Amen. He wants a successful harvest. Yes. Who sends the rain? God. God. Mm -hmm. When the rain comes, does it change the soil from being dry to wet? Yes. yes. And when the rain falls upon the soil, mm -hmm. and you've got corn in that soil, what happens to the corn? It grows. And as the rain begins to fall, mm -hmm. that corn stalk begins to grow. And look what happens. You planted one grain of corn, right? One. <laughs> and one ear comes up, one grain, one ear comes up. <laughs> Five hundred grains of corn. Who did that? See, listen. It only takes a spark. Yes. Yes. It takes a spark. Amen. What if you have a spark tonight? All right. What if you have a spark? If you go to Revelation chapter. Number two, he tells you exactly what are the corrections that need to be made. Look at Revelation chapter number two, real quickly for me. It's Revelation chapter two. Listen to what he says. Revelation chapter two, the Bible would, would say, I mean, you, you don't even have to try and guess what was, what was needed. Revelation chapter two, look at verse five. He said, if you have left your first love, the first thing you need to do is what? Remember. Remember. Ah. 
Remember from whence thou art fallen. Yeah? You repent. Say so you need to start remembering. Remember the way it used to be. And that's why it's important now. Listen to me. I had a young couple in my church when I was a young pastor. I'm at my work when all of a sudden he shows up. He says to me, he said, Pastor, my wife left last night. She don't want me to come back home. Mm. I says, that's so? I started praying, Lord, what, what, what do I do? God says, as soon as you're off from work, go to where she's working. Pastor, I jumped in my car, I went, I parked my car in the parking lot, and I came up to the window before she even knew. Here I am standing in the window, and as soon as she saw me, no, 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 she knew. <laughs> yeah, I really got to I pulled out my wallet, and I used to carry a song around in my wallet. The song went something like this. Time goes by so fast. Mm. Things get in the way. Mm. Remember the way it used to be only yesterday? Wishing for days gone by, hoping they still could be. Love hasn't left your life at all. Say your song and you will see. Amen. They uh, gave her that song. They said, All I want you to do is read this book. And as soon as she started reading, she said, I want, him to, I want him to come back home. And I went home that night and I spoke to them as a, a young couple. Get this. The next morning I got a call. And the call said, Pastor, he's there. Oh so my God. He, said, he was at the only third thing in his day. He said, Pastor. He was on his way to work that morning, lost control of the car, mm. slammed into a tree and was instantly Wow. Hey, what if you had been his wife? Wow. And I had come that night and you refused to reconcile with your mm. husband. Mm -hmm. you imagine how you would have had to live the rest of your life. Yes. Wait a minute. Somebody in this church. But you need to get right with God. Get right with that person. That's good. What if tonight that person goes home? That's good. Never wakes up. Yes, right. What if it is your husband? You reach it. You're sleeping in the same bed together and you reach tomorrow morning. Touch him and he's cold as ice. Uh -huh. But you didn't. You went to bed. Uh -huh. upset to each other. All right. Remember from whence you have come. Oh. Secondly, not only remember, but repent uh -huh. from your folly. Repent of your folly. Listen, you know you. You know your sins. You know what's wrong you. In fact, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't know what's wrong, all you need to do is go before God and say, God, Please bring to my attention yes, come on, right. come on. anything sinful that I need to repent of. Yes. Amen. So remember, from whence you're falling, repent of your folly. Thirdly, return to your fire. Mm. Did you hear what he said? I, I like the way he said it. 
Even like this. Remember from when thou has fallen. Repent and do the first verse. Alright. He said you've left your first love. Mm -hmm. He said return to your first love. Because when he said you have left your first love. He said it like this. My first love is my wife. If I left that and start running around with him, with my with another woman, is that next woman my first love? No. My wife is my first love. And as a Christian, who is your first love? The Lord. They so said, listen, if there is no revival in your church, search your heart. He said, make the necessary corrections. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why. You still have a revelation? Please, it's right here. It's right here. What's a consequence of no revival? I'm going to read it right there. Listen. Remember from when thou has fallen, and repent and do thy first work, or else I will remove thy candlestick from out of this place. Yeah. Listen. <coughs> Pastor, the church is made up of people. So I said, listen, if you don't, when I call and I point out to you things that are hindering revival, mm -hmm. He said, listen, if you don't step up and correct your evil ways, mm -hmm. your sinful ways, continue in your sin. Because he said, he that being often reproved, and hardness, and hardness is that your what? Suddenly be destroyed. Suddenly mm -hmm. And that without remedy. God will take you out. Mm -hmm. God will take you out. Let me tell you something else. Not only will God take you out, but God will close down your church. Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. Right, listen, you better make sure mm -hmm. that you will not be the cause of this church. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. 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 But let me end with one last thing. When we look at the conditions, we look at the conditions that cry to God. For revival. All right. Secondly, we've looked at the corrections to restart the fires of the world. Because remember, he's, they said, will you not revive us? And what was the next word? Again. Again. <laughs> and thirdly, we've looked at a consequence mm -hmm. when we do not submit ourselves for revival. God said, I could take you out and I could shut down your church. All right. It's my church. I can shut it down. All right. No matter who your pastor is. You can shut it down. But the fourth thing is the celebration of revival fires. That's it. God brings revival. Oh boy, listen to it. It's right here, you know. It's right here. Listen to this. Look at this. Look at this. Will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Isn't it rejoicing celebration? Yeah. Yes. God said, I want to bring revival so that the church can celebrate me. Amen. Yeah. So just like this, let me tell you, when revival comes to your church, here are the things that's going to cause you to start celebrating. First, there will be peace among the saints. Yes. Wait a minute, listen, it's right here. Look, it's right here. The sun is right here. Listen to this. Listen, he says, he says in verse 8, 
I will hear what the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people. It's right here. He said, when the Bible comes, you're going to celebrate peace. You're going to see peace to his people. Listen, his people are going to be at peace with one another. Secondly, look at Here's the second thing. Not only peace, but the second thing is this. You're going to celebrate because, you see, the Lord that was outside of you, mm-hmm. he comes right back. His presence returns yes. in the congregation. Amen. Ain't that enough to celebrate about? Yes. Yes. Number, number three, not only the peace to his saints, and the presence of God back in the sanctuary. But number three, the power of God upon his saints. Amen. Amen. Listen, Paul said, listen, even if I'm sick, <laughs> Paul was sick and prayed three times in that God, take it away from me. Amen. Amen. That's grace is sufficient. He said, listen, mm-hmm. I would rather be sick mm-hmm. and you not heal me. Mm. So that the power of God may rest on him. Amen. He said, listen, we will celebrate not only because of the peace to the saints and the presence of God in his sanctuary, but because of the power of God and his saints. Can I ask you a question? Do you ever know? Can you ever sense? Can you ever tell when the power of God is resting upon a saint. Can you tell it? Can you tell it? And is that what celebrated? Yes. Yes. Let me share one other thing with you. One of the celebrations of revival, three of them happened inside of the church and one started happening outside of the church. First, Peace to his saints, his presence in the sanctuary, his power upon those that are saved, and his pardoning of sins. Let me what he said. Back to My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from God and forgive their this sins sin. and I heal their land. Does all I need here? Yes. Yes, very much. Does Tennessee need healing? Yes. <laughs> Does Chattanooga need healing? Amen. Does Hickson need healing? Amen. Yes. Listen Take your finger and point at the question in this building right here. Did you do that? Just point. Just, just point that somewhere. Point that somewhere. Okay. Point that somewhere. Look at a person there. Point that and look at them. I am saying to you tonight, if revival fires are going to start and continue in this church, God is going to hear Hickson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Keep on thinking. I want you to go. Keep on. Now it says. Amen. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. The revival fires are going to start and continue. Yes. We just need to be honest with God tonight. Amen. Mm-hmm. Not my father. Not my sister. But it's me. Amen. 
And God has sent me here. He said to you, let the fire start tonight. Right here. Let it start. What will you ask of me? What are you going to do? On the road of Damascus, the greatest persecutor of the church is going to kill Christians. God knocked him down under Damascus road. He's not on the road. As I remember when he said to God, What would thou have to me? Tonight, God is asking you. What's going to be answered? Heads, wide eyes, close, please, and no one looking at all. 